Welcome back to Opening Statements. I'm Julie Grant. This morning, we're shining a spotlight on the suitcase murder trial involving defendant Sarah Boone. She's accused of second-degree murder after she zipped her boyfriend up in a suitcase and left him there to suffocate and die, according to police, back in 2020. Well, now, four years later, Boone is impatiently awaiting her trial and maintaining her innocence. She's gone through a carousel of attorneys. She's currently on lawyer number eight right now, if you can believe it. And she's also penned numerous letters to her former and current judge on the case, voicing all of her frustrations. To her new judge, the Honorable Judge Cranick, she writes, quote, finally, a new judge. It's strange how the Lord works. As I was in the process of trying to disqualify Wooten after being my judge for four years and me still incarcerated with nothing to show other than seven, seven different attorneys, not by choice. I'm still wondering why I've had to wait for four years for something to finally happen on or in my case. Either way, I'm still here waiting patiently and very very excited to get this highly anticipated show on the road. She calls it a show. Okay. So what does Sarah Boone's communications tell us about her? We have a very special guest we're so pleased to have on opening statements this morning. She's a civil attorney and she's a former Broward County Circuit Court judge. You know her from presiding over the Parkland school shooting case, the Honorable Elizabeth Shear. Good morning, Judge. Nice to see you today. Good morning. It's great to see you, too. Great to be here. Oh, thank you kindly. Let's talk first about all of the lawyers that Sarah Boone has gone through, Judge. She uh, has just managed to get her eighth lawyer representing her. I know you've gone through some of the documents ahead of coming on the show this morning. Uh, based on what you've seen in the withdrawals that have been filed with the court by all other seven lawyers, uh, what are your thoughts on how difficult she might be as a client judge? Uh, my, my gut reaction is she does not like the advice that her attorneys are giving her. My gut reaction says that there's a pattern here. These lawyers are obviously telling, she's obviously coming up with some type of defense or some type of trial strategy that her lawyers believe to be either uh, against her interests, not in her best interests, or just a flat out um, fraud on the court. In other words, something that's completely false. And they do not feel comfortable going forward representing um, this woman knowing that that's the route she wants to take. Mm -hmm. that's, my, that's my gut reaction when I read it. Although uh, attorneys, are, they're not required to tell you exactly what happened because of attorney-client privilege, but when they use words like irreconcilable differences and due to ethical considerations, which were the words that were cited in the last motion to withdraw. Um, that's sort of a judge read between the lines type thing. Um, she wants me to do something that I can't do under the rules of professional responsibility. Yes, Judge Shear, thank you for that. Uh, we use the term in the legal world, the, the noisy withdrawal, right, where attorneys want to signal something to a judge like yourself uh, to let you know, look, we're doing everything. Right, everything we can. It's it's not us. Right. Uh, so, Judge, thank you for that. Uh, moving on to something else. Sarah Boone likes to write letters to the judges. I'm sure during your time serving on the bench, uh, you've received some jail mail yourself. Uh, what's it like when that happens, and how do you manage that? please so believe it or not the majority of the jail mail the judge doesn't read because it's actually an ex parte communication meaning it's one party talking to you without the other party present in other words if the prosecutor was writing the judge letters without copying the defense you, you can see how problematic that would be. So as a judge, you have to just do a cursory review of what is it that they're asking for. If they're asking to fire their lawyer or they're, uh, they're indicating that they want a speedy trial, those are the only two times you can actually acknowledge their request. Anything else has to be copied and sent to, both, to the, lo the lawyers for both sides in order for it to be uh, comply with the ethical rules of having both sides review everything. Right. Uh, Judge, thank you for that. Sarah Boone, currently on attorney number eight. 
based on the past history, it may not work out so well. I'm wondering, let's just say you're the judge presiding over this case. Uh, how might you manage it if there's a problem with attorney number eight? Then at what point, I guess what I want to ask, at what point might there be a suggestion or can there even be a suggestion to Sarah Boone uh, to perhaps consider uh, representing herself? Well, in my opinion, as a judge, the last thing that you want is, is, is somebody who's difficult to represent themselves because that makes the job so much harder on everybody else. And it really, I have very rarely do you see a case where a defendant can represent themselves and be uh, effective. So that would not be my goal. However, without criticizing any particular judge, I would say this boils down to to case management. And my practice was, let's say attorney A wants to withdraw and attorney B wants to come in. I bring both attorneys forward before me and I say, why do you want to withdraw and why do you want to come in? And then I make them tell me exactly what else needs to be done on the case. I give them a reasonable amount of time and I tell attorney B, I'll let you in on this case, but you're going to have you know, let's say they ask for six months. Okay, six months, not a problem. I'm going to set the trial six months out, but you need to be prepared. If you can't be prepared, tell me now, and I won't let you in on this case. She'll have to find somebody else or stick with the previous lawyer. That would be so that it wouldn't get to attorney number eight. Right, right. Appreciate it, Judge. Uh, Judge, hearkening upon your experience as a prosecuting attorney, we know that you served as a prosecutor early in your career. I want to show you two clips now, please, and get your reaction on the other side. And the first one, this is going to be key evidence, the video of the victim inside the suitcase crying out for help. And then in the following clip, you'll see Sarah Boone speaking to investigators who arrive at the scene after the night. 911 call. Sarah. The problem is, is I fell asleep. I fell asleep. When did you do CPR? This morning. When I found it. Before you called? Yes! <laughs> One o'clock right now. I tried. I was awake, but I actually got out of the bed at like 12.30ish, whatever. So I came downstairs. Hey, honey, brother, and I was like, oh, f he's in the suitcase still. So she passes out or falls asleep while he's in the suitcase. Uh, Judge, your reaction to this case evidence, uh, as we know this stuff, it's, it's coming on in. And it's compelling as anything. I mean, that, that's just, that's, that's some of the most compelling evidence I, I've ever seen. I mean, you could almost feel yourself gasping for breath as you're watching it. And, and, and that leads me to another, although, you know, of course, this is my opinion and I can't say for sure, but a woman who's trying everything, going through attorneys like this, even though she's saying, I want my day in trial, uh, my gut reaction is she's trying to delay and delay and delay because uh, she probably realizes just how bad uh, the evidence is against her. Mm -hmm. in this case. Mm -hmm. Right, Judge. I've got another clip where uh, she's talking to police and they talk about notifying uh, the victim's next of kin. Take a listen to what she says when they tell her that. They're going to know what we're here, what, you know, what we're investigating and that we're still... We They're going to think I killed him. Why would they think They always have said that. They've always, always, always have said that. What have they I said? told you it's because I'm the blue-eyed... White dragon, that's what they call me, because they don't want him with me. So he's basically just not really been around his family because he chooses me over them. Judge, what do you think hearing her say that? This is, this is someone who, as a, a criminal defendant, is not smart. By the way that she's coming at the media, she's trying to, to, to give her side of the story. Uh, I, I imagine that that was her setup of what she was going to eventually tell the police and she's trying to come up with excuses not realizing that all of this talking is is just hurting her she is stepping one foot and then another foot and one step after another into a deep deep water mm -hmm. oh yeah she just um she's just 
not doing well for herself. Mm -mm, no, not at all. Uh, I can't wait to see if she testifies at trial. I have a feeling she might. Uh, Judge, last question. Do you all think right, we'll I'll see it? Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Do you think we'll see it, her testify? I absolutely think she's going to testify. I think that's the other problem. I think that her lawyers can't can't get her not to testify. And ultimately that's the defendant's right. So what I predict is gonna happen is a lawyer is cannot suborn perjury, knowingly put forth perjury to the court. So these lawyers obviously are having differences of opinion as to whether she can testify. They don't want her to testify, if I had to guess. Uh, I imagine they will, they will sort of submit her, her testimony to the court without asking any questions in the form of a narrative, which is the only way that a lawyer legally under the rules of professional responsibility can offer testimony or allow their client to offer testimony without being a part of it, uh, knowing it to be false. Right. Uh, Judge, this is such fascinating insight you're sharing. We really appreciate yeah. that. It gives something for us to look for when the time comes, because reading between between the lines, kind of reading the tea leaves in all of those motions, it seems that uh, there is a big problem going on here. And maybe you just might have hit the nail on the head with her testimony. Uh, we've got to leave it there for now, but we would love to have you back. Uh, Judge Elizabeth Shear, thank you so much for coming thank on you. Opening Statements.